been rough on Oscar. I can't, I haven't uh, smoked crack once since I've been here. Because of the altitude. Because of the altitude. I'm cleaning. There are children out there, Oscar. That's an accomplishment, I think. <laughs> If there are any children out there, you better put earmuffs on them right now. Yeah. Let's just get ahead of it. I always can, man. Yeah, I apologize. And by crack, I mean I haven't stepped on a crack on the sidewalk. Dad step on the back, Dad break your mother's back. It's an old nursery room. Dad Were well, you guys excited to be here? So, I feel like we should start where the wind's kind of at the level, the high level of intensity we have in the office right now. Because I don't know if you're aware, you're probably aware, but there's a lot of resurgence for the office as of the last five months. There was a little thing on SNL, Steve Carell had those kind of, uh, gave a little wind to the idea that there may be an office reboot in the midst, right? Everyone has signed on except for uh, Brian. Uh, he demands payment in gold bullion. I don't know how those talks are going. Yeah, gold bullion, absolutely. We would love it, you guys. We would love a reunion of some kind and maybe all the key players that need to get together and make that happen. But the accounting department will show up for sure. love there is for the office because we know there's some love for the office, yes? I think that's easy to get behind, guys. But the question is, how likely is that to happen? We don't want it to happen. What are the odds if you're betting in Vegas? Oh, man, Brian, you're, you're more of a Vegas guy. I am you're a bit of a gambler. Brian in Vegas. Um, I think that something resembling the office, I think that there is about a 92% chance that something will happen at some time. That's pretty high. But speed. <laughs> Here we go. So in fact, there's like... Just at some point in time, I gave as many ounces as I could. How often do you guys get together like this? It seems like you guys are best buds. I haven't seen them since we wrapped the show. I hate them. This is miserable for me. Brian came to the hospital when my daughter was born. And I know, because as much as you like to be like, mm, tough kid, he brought her the biggest, cutest stuffed animal. It's a giant monkey. She still has it, sits on her bed every day. And Brian lives in San Diego, but he still comes up and we still get together once in a while. He, San Diego's far from where we are. Yeah, and Oscar just randomly stops by my house. This is true. He'll say, Angela, I left a thing. It's on your porch. You'll get it. I'm like, okay. Angela and Creed and I kind of live in the same neighborhood. Creed lives down the street from me. 100%. And I live um, up on the hill. He dog sits for his uh, kids sometimes. And um, he was walking the dogs, and I was on, like, my mom walk, I like to go on. I burned zero calories, and I'm just like, oh, look at the flowers. And I hear... If you burn, it, burn any more calories, you'll disappear. <laughs> but I was, like, walking, and I just heard this voice go, pumpkins out. I'm like, Creed? He's like, hey, it's Andrea, the office bitch. <laughs>
So streaming service is keeping things alive for everybody at the next generation. What do you guys miss most about the show? That's easy, the people. For sure, the people. We all became very close. Nine years of your life, I mean, people had babies, people, I mean, everything you can imagine that happens in nine years happened to all of us, and... Yeah, that and the sex. <laughs> oh, it was filthy and ridiculous. You see, we were constant, really. Constant. Really. We shot in bad eyes, we were away from prying eyes, no executives, no, no paparazzi, no press. And we were wild and crazy. I'm so tired. I'm exhausted from the, from the altitude. Go ahead, Ryan. Take it. You can't. I don't know what I'm saying. Wait, Oscar, you can't I just don't say know what I'm saying. a bunch of inappropriate things and just say, it's the altitude. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to say. It was the altitude. <laughs> Officer, I'm not responsible. Officer, I'm not responsible for my actions. I can blame it on the low oxygen quality. We missed the people. Look what Angela said. Erase everything I said. Uh, what Angela said. The, the, uh, hashtag. 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 And the gambling. <laughs> Who's the funniest out of you three? I Me. Mean, between them. I like to think it's because 
because my character requested it. <laughs> because Kevin was stinky or something. Um, but anyway, he took that post-it note and he taped it to his glass side, his partition. It was there the whole entire series. And when we wrapped, he gave it to me. And I have that little post-it note that was the beginning of Sprinkles. I took a pair of shoes and a jacket, and I think I gave the shoes away. I may still have the jacket. I might have given them both away. It's a great story, Oscar. <laughs> well, I had to save time because yours was 20 minutes. About the post it now. And then she probably sold on eBay. Altitude! 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 <laughs> so, you have some favorite things you chose. What about any favorite memories from the show? Favorite moments from the show? How much time do we have, right? I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, just the fact that you guys are all here and that it meant something to you and it meant something to us and, it, and it's still resonating and just, it's very moving to me. It kind of chokes me up a little bit. Two, two couples have proposed in front of us while on the photo shoot, and I've had two guys tell me while while they're while uh, they're. Uh, they were in labor, having the child. They had the office on the loop in the, in the delivery room, and people have tattoos on their bodies. I mean, it's it's crazy and it's wonderful. Yeah. Memories from the show, or did it happen since? Oh, yes. I'll take either one. Maybe it's from the show, but yeah. But Oscar and I went off on a tangent, Ryan. Just go ahead. Oh, sorry. All right. Yeah. Great. Altitude. Um, <laughs> Um, yes, he is, not only is he brilliant, but he's so kind. 
and he gave us the biggest gift, because a lot of times when a show wraps, you might wrap on a Monday, and everyone else wraps on a Wednesday, or someone wraps on a Friday, you're not all together. Your scenes play out at different times. He wrapped us all, the whole entire cast, in one scene together. So they actually yell, that's a series wrap on the cast of The Office. And we all ended together. And that's why you see all of us there breaking down. It's so special. We know all of them. You guys, it was also crazy when Steve corrupt because the show went on two years. Yeah. But when Steve left that week, there was so much crying and laughing. Because oh Will Ferrell was the... the Will Ferrell! The guest. He, he turned to me at one moment and he goes, I feel like I'm someone's plus one at a funeral. But, <laughs> like I'm trying to do jokes and bits. He was. He kept us laughing and crying simultaneously. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite scenes is uh, when I threw Band at the ceiling. <laughs>
Can you walk us through the kiss with Michael Scott? I, I wish I could. I said this no, let's, let's, let's walk through it right so now. many times. We kiss backstage, and now he thinks he can take advantage. <laughs> the, you know, when, this, when he first did it, when he first uh, uh, kissed me, like for a year after that, I thought, oh, he was bored, and it was a long day, and he was just messing around. But he, he did it because the scene was flat. Nothing was really happening. He was hugging me, and that's kind of appropriate. And I think Steve Carell, executive producer, is like, I gotta do something with the scene. Let's try something to make it an office scene, an awkward moment, and that's what he did. That particular time, I think it was the third or fourth take, he like uh, hugged me and then he's like, no, we're doing this, we're gonna do this. And then he kept, and they weren't ready, because I wasn't ready, it was totally surprised. I think totally it was probably the slowest, most awkward, like three minutes in my life, like top five awkward moments, because you just watched him slowly. No. And now it's inappropriate. Now it's an office scene. Because it's inappropriate. So oh my God. it was great. We did it in one I love the guy, but I'm glad we got it in one take. I didn't want to keep having to make out with Steve. He's, he's a wonderful man. But uh but yeah, it was great and you can see their reactions and we did it in one take. Yeah. I was just so glad we didn't laugh and ruin it, because that was so hard. It was so hard. And there were plenty of takes we laughed and ruined, but I was really happy. I think it would have been appropriate because it really it would have been from nervousness. Like Jenna's like and BJ's just staring, and Mindy's clapping with joy, and supporting us. And, uh, you look at everyone else in the cast, you watch their faces, and they're watching you in the front of that room, and it's jaws dropped. It was so funny. It was rain, and then Wayne wants to get in on it twice. <laughs> yes. Now, I know you guys have some favorite moments from the show, right? Questions. I know we've got a long line that's been waiting for a long time, so guys, please ask your questions for Ryan, Oscar, and Angela. Uh, hi! Thank you for coming. You guys are the greatest. Um, obviously, there were a lot of wonderful moments, but I was wondering if there's an awful moment that happened while filming that stood out. An awful moment? <laughs> yeah, just a bad A bad one. Let's, let's take a turn here. An awful, an awful moment? A bad moment. I mean, like, like personal, like, un, like just uncomfortable. I don't know. The first thing that comes to mind is the that episode where Ryan started the fire. Uh, we they aired that out of order, and we filmed that in like August in the Valley in California. We were all because there was a fire. We all ran outside in our suits, and it was about 115 degrees. And we spent three or four straight days out there. That was awful. And what was that season, you guys, that some guy drove onto the parking lot and started taking pictures? And John was like, who's that guy? And then we got security after that. And people... Never were, had security. You never had security. Yeah. You could just yeah. drive on the set. And we got more popular more popular. Things started to change and stuff. And one day some guy was on the, in our parking lot in our space with us taking pictures. And Chris is like, what? Who's that? And then after that, Universal put up a little guard there. A little guard booth? Yeah. Um, the episode Work Bus, directed by Ryan Cranston. Poor Ryan, I was like, Ryan, here you get to direct the office, and we're back in a, a remote, like a bus. You're always in an RV. So, we're filming, and we don't know why, but somehow the air conditioning, um, like, tube thing, uh, somehow got attached to the exhaust. Slowly, we're in the work bus, we're filming in that, and we're like, <coughs> people, and then like our camera person started to get lightheaded, she almost fainted, do you remember? We're like, we don't feel so good, I don't feel good. And then we realized we've been breathing in car exhaust. And they pulled over and they had to like, like get us all out, we had to get air. People's eyes were watering, Ellie was like, why am I crying? It felt so, at one point we were going too fast, like we were speeding and that turn we made was really for real. Yeah. That turn, did you see us all wiped out? It was crazy. I know. Basically, um, everything was miserable the entire time. On a brighter note, what question do you have? Um, your on-screen personalities are so severe. When you meet fans on the street, is it hard when they expect you to act that way? But obviously, like I follow Angela, you're not that way. Angela is exactly 
exactly the same. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Just a total bitch. <laughs> Chatty. So like a lady came up to me at Target and like, look, if you're gonna come up to me at Target, I wanna ask you where you got, you know, that seasonal item in your cart and I'm gonna talk your ear off about it. Um, and I saw the moment on her face where she was with me in the beginning. She was like, hey, nice to meet you. I was like, nice to meet you too. Oh, did you know that they have a sale right now on their bedding? But just their floral bedding, I don't know why. And I started talking and I saw me lose her. <laughs> Oh God, oh God, she's still talking. So, uh, I don't think people expect me to have my personality. See, I would think, Brian, your character difference is the most jarring. Because when people see you, I don't think they expect Kevin to come out. You know? What do you mean? <laughs> He's the farthest from his character, that I think, from all of us. And of course, Steve. Yeah, and and Ray. Well, Ray, Ray, a little bit. Ray is a part of life, let's be honest. All right, go ahead. All right, um, Brian, where did the idea of uh, the moose blank short come from? The moose blank short. That is so, so random and bizarre. <laughs> I don't know how to answer this question. Nobody knows what he's talking about but me. I appreciate it. Have you seen it? You looked it up. Uh, okay. I mean, it's out there. It's online. This is uh, this is totally PG. What, what are you talking about? I did a short film slightly before the office started. This is not a joke, and it was called Moose Cock. <laughs> I did that. It's not at all what you might think right now, but it was. <laughs> it was like, yeah, and it was literally this short film that was called that, and everybody just kept saying that phrase. That was it. And how many copies did you want of this? Yeah, I don't know. Now everyone's like Googling. before he started doing professional films. <laughs> And um, 
we were just so happy to be working and liked each other that the first, I would say about the first year, definitely the first year and a half to two years before it really exploded and we just got too busy. Every uh, Thursday night when the show would air, we would go to a different person's house all together and watch the show together. All of us, yeah. We would, I have so many photos of all of you guys in my apartment, just watching. The, the first like two seasons, really, we did that. I wasn't invited. What's you weren't there. Right? I have pictures of you, Altitude. <laughs> no. Yeah, but we were we were like a ragtag group, and we would we did get to go to some of the big award show stuff. And I'll never forget when Steve was nominated for a Golden Globe. We showed up, and we were like, we're here for the office, and. At trying to get on the red carpet to get into the award show, this guy was like, who do you work for? Which office? I was like, we're, we're on the show, the office. No? Okay. And then at that time, that it was at the Pacific Design Center, and it was us three, we were at your house, remember? And we had to walk, and it was cold out, or you had heels, and you took them off. They didn't provide a car for us, so we had to park for her and walk. We walked like four blocks, and she's walking with her bare feet through West Hollywood, and we're just the three of us walking. Talking, that was so fun. Remember that? So we were, we were sort of like the little engine that could, but I think it made us really close. I think we, a, lot of, a lot of people picked up on that. I mean, it seems like there's a synergy with the show, right? I mean, you picked up on that, right? Go ahead. Hi, my name is Mary, and I grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Some kind. And I've got one more question here for you. Uh, 
a scale of one to ten. One more. 